Welcome back. Now, in a letter addressed to the chairman of the Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19, the Nigerian Labour Congress has called on the federal government not to extend the lockdown order caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, warning that doing so might cause social unrest in the affected states and the federal capital territory. The union also found that the method employed by the federal government in the distribution of the policies measure. It called for expansion of the initiative to all Nigerians affected by the pandemic. And stay with us to have a conversation on this is political analyst Francis Chilaka. Thank you for staying with us. Thank you very much. And just before we go into contemplation, we early on on our news had the NLC boss Ayuba Waba and he had this to say. Submitted a 13 page plan of action to the presidential committee through the secretary to the government of the federation as our own contribution in response to the challenge of the COVID-19. Uh, in that document, we commended the initiative and the leadership provided at all levels at mobilizing the country for a good fight against coronavirus pandemic. We posi posited that our response should also entail forward looking with respect to post lockout and the much needed social economic response. Apart from infection and mortality rate, the biggest impact of coronavirus pandemic is disruption of global social economic disorder, including Nigeria. And therefore, beyond the threat of coronavirus to health and life, there are very real threats to livelihood. Jobs are under threat and production lines have been stopped. So what we said is that in looking at the world forward and also taking into consideration the statement by the Director General of WHO yesterday, in his statement, and let me try to quote him verbatim. Make no mistake that we have a long way to go. Coronavirus will not be with us, will be with us for a very long time. And he proceeded to say that most countries are still in the early stage of the epidemic. And some that were affected early in the pandemic are starting to see resurgence in the case. So clearly from this statement, it entails that we should be forward-looking. We should also think out of the box. Uh, you recall that part of the challenge of this coronavirus is the issue of our economy. And therefore, we should do everything possible also within our means to ensure that we prevent our economy from lapsing into prolonged coma if the long, long lockdown continues for a very long time. So we need to recover. We need to reconstruct and we need a resilient plan. That is what we said. So in actually taking any decision by government, we need to look at the issue of convenience and also the fact that the palliative must reach the poor of the forest. Because in the situation that we are in now, we have three class of people. We have wage earners. We have those that are in the majority from the informal sector that have to struggle on daily basis to have an earning. So this is really the situation. And therefore it must be quoted within the context of the 13-page item that we afforded. When the lockdown started in Nigeria, it did not start holistically. It started with one state after another. And therefore, people are moving from one end of the country to another, and that, I think, has been counterproductive. What ought to have been done in the first place is for a total lockdown, and therefore there will be no movement, and therefore we can be able to now do proper uh, getting of those cases. But we, we, where we are today now, clearly speaking, some states have been on lockdown for about a month. Some are just starting. So we are not on the same page. And that's why we are saying that we should look at the balance of convenience. Because lockdown is only a means to achieving an end. It's not an end in itself. And therefore, strategically, what we are planning for government to do is, one, if there is need for further extension, then the poor of the poor must get incentive to allow them to continue to eat. If not, then clearly poverty, hunger, and destitution will follow, and then it will be difficult to continue to uh, make them to stay at home. So clearly speaking, there must be a strategy to look at how to address this issue. And secondly, it must be enforceable, because presently many states are not enforcing it, and therefore clearly we are not on the same page, and that's why it's counterproductive to continue on the same line. We are using a template, an old template, that have been used to send social intervention transfer to people. But this is a different issue altogether. This is like an issue of life and death. And you need to look at the poor of the poorest to be able to allow them have at least 
one meal per day. Many of them could not afford one meal per day. And that's why I've seen many people traveling from as far as Lagos with motorcycle back to Abuja, especially those people that have to hustle on daily basis to earn a living. They don't have uh, means of bank account. They don't have saving anywhere. Uh, they hustle uh, every day. They hustle from morning to evening to get what to eat in the evening. So these are the class of people that we are supposed to target. And therefore, we don't have ready-made data to target such group. But there is a way we can target them. We can use our work system. We can use our unit system. We can use our traditional rulers. We can use mass-based organizations like labor to reach out to the poor of the poor who need this palliative most. And therefore, the lockdown can be effective. And the president of the Nigerian Labour Congress, right there, Mr. Yuba Waba, on their request to the federal government not to extend the lockdown. Now, let's, let's talk about the sensibility and, and how logical this would be in the light of the ravaging pandemic. Um, I've always said that we don't have a Labour Congress in Nigeria. Um, well, why would you say that? Yes, I would say, I would say with all sense of responsibility, because if we did, they ought to have sent in this proposal even before the Lagos State lockdown started. Yeah, but you know, it came... It came Abrupt. It was, it was pretty sudden, the decision order that came from the president. Yes. Now they're bringing, if not that the governors are saying we want to have another extension of two weeks, yes. this will come up. But the point is, when people say the poorest of the poor in this country, I begin to laugh because this is a country that has no database. So how do you identify who is poor? Yeah, we're good. I, was I was going to come to that. Now, there's the use of the, the National Social Register and also the use of BVN, which they also said that the palliatives are not getting to the poorest of the poor. And I did ask him earlier on, uh, how do we begin to identify the poorest of the poor? Uh, many of them are not captured in this national social register, and also the poorest of the poor don't have bank accounts. So what, what is the best way, do you think, the government can implore in making sure these palliatives get to those who really need it? Well, if you say most of them don't have a bank account, I know that every family in this country has a bank account. Every family has a phone number, GSM. Everybody, most people have voter's card. Even though if they don't vote, they have it. So use the BVN, use the voter's card. I mean, these are, I, I, I said something earlier, you know, one time on the show, I said, when the mobile networks started doing biometrics, I had expected that the government would have keyed into that to create a database for Nigerians. No, they didn't. The national identification number that is another hurdle on its own. How many people have it? I know what it took me to get my number, and I know that up to now my kids haven't gotten theirs. Yes, and for you to get it, you have to go as early as 6, 5 a.m. to put your name on a sheet of paper and all of that. See, the government keeps going round and round in circles. What the Minister for Humanitarian Services was doing, for me, was the most analog way of doing anything. In the 21st century, you just gather people, you're counting money and you're giving to them, it's like, it doesn't make sense. If the government is serious, the discos, they know every home. They distribute NEPA bills before they went um, um, digital. They know every home. You can use them. Now, let's talk about the engagement of the private sector in this right now. I mean, what, what are the disadvantages or advantages of engaging in, in making sure that there's a comprehensive distribution of these palliatives to get to those who really need it? What role can the private sector play? And if there are any disadvantages or advantages in engaging them at this, at this point in time? Because the NLC also did call for the improvement in the distribution of the system through increased stakeholders' participation. We have stakeholders in all of this. Well, it brings us back to the local government. But when I talk of local government, I'm not talking of the local government chairman. Yeah. Because the local government chairman have party affiliation. So what you do with the local government is when you give it to the local government chairman, they gather their party members and distribute to their party members. But if you bring this palliative down to the local government, you have the chiefs in every village in Nigeria. You have chiefs who are trusted by the people. And I know what it means for you to, for the federal government to say, the chief in so-and-so -so town was giving so-and-so -so amount for his people. And it doesn't go around. They will remove that chief immediately. So you have churches. Even though the churches are all shut down, you can still use the churches to do what you want to do. You have the CSOs, civil societies. Government should open up. Government should partner groups that can help them do this thing. Government can't do it alone, but what you have is a situation where the government wants to do everything on its own. You cannot open up. That's what, that's what transparency is all about. That's what inclusiveness is all about. And that's what accountability is all about. 
And there are a lot of CSOs in Nigeria that are registered, that even on their own right now, they are reaching out to people. Government should reach out to them and see how they can partner with them to reach out to people before the shutdown takes effect. Now, in the course of a phone call with him, he did mention that we need to, to come up and develop homegrown solutions to the distribution of these palliatives. Now, in, in your, what would be your recommendation to the federal government when we think about homegrown solutions and what could they possibly be? Go down to the grassroots. The grassroots, yes. I because, mean, you, you see, during, before no, the just, before, just going down to the grassroots, you can't meet them one on one on no, one basis. The so election, there's got to be know, modalities our and technicalities to it. politicians know how to, to share money during, before elections. How do they get them to share the money? Now, we're having, this issue where, we're having an issue where social distancing is a must. It can also be applied. You have community heads. Use them effectively. In every village, people know how many people they have there. They know how many people who need palliatives. Use them. But if you keep saying that you need the minister to be the one to go from one state to another distributing money, it will not work. Those who have BVN, the government would should say, we're giving everybody that has all the banks, you have BVN, um, those with their BVN that is working, send 20,000, 30,000 to their accounts. You will see that people, you'll be shocked that these poorest of the poor, most of them have bank accounts. Mr. Chilaka, we, we have, we have a hydra-headed monster we're dealing with right here. Um, the, the pandemic is ravaging on one side and hunger is also ravaging on one side. And the cases right now, there are over 800 confirmed cases 800, in the country. As it's, something plus. Yes, I mean over, over 800 yeah. cases right now. And there have been cases of criminal activities. So it seems, it seems that the d different sides, the, the government right now is battling. And if per venture there is an extension of this lockdown, how do we begin to manage this whole situation so it doesn't spiral out of control? Ben, the first thing we all as Nigerians must admit, including our leaders, is that this pandemic has thrown open the failure in governance. That is the first thing it has done. So where did we get it wrong? We got it wrong with our leaders not being accountable and not giving us good governance. I mean, everybody's saying, test, 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 test. Even if you test all Nigerians and you, let's assume today you have about, say, this is a country of about 200 million and you have 10 million people that are infected. Where are you going to keep them? There are already security threats all around Lagos. So, How so, do we make sure if this, in case this is extended, that we bring that to the barest minimum? These guys, they call them one million, million boys. boys. Yeah. How do they congregate? Do they, are they spirits? So how do they congregate? So it means that the security architecture is zero. If we're saying that there's a lockdown in Lagos, and then you can see 100, 200, 300 people coming together to attack a premises or attack an estate, then the security network is zero. The government needs to, at the same time, as we're looking at the health sector, we should be looking at the security architecture of this country. We need to look at it holistically. Something is wrong somewhere. These guys, how do they move? Is it that they just wake up in the morning, wherever they walk from, wherever they are, to congregate somewhere? If there's a lockdown, let the lockdown be total. No movement. If you have no reason being outside, you have no reason being outside. Anybody that is caught should be arrested. That is the first way to curb it. Now, the Nigerian Labour Congress has always been seen as a union that fights for, for the people. Now, you disagree with that earlier on when you did say we don't have a, 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 labor, a labor union. Now, this call by them, do, do, do you think there's any, are there undertones to it or should we take it at face value that they're actually concerned for the, the people of, of Nigeria as it is every call, currently? Every call that the Nigerian Labour Congress has called in recent past, what has happened to it? You and I know that some states are not paying the same, the 30,000 Naira minimum wage. What has the Labour Congress done? When the Lagos state government hinted about shutting down, what did the Labour Congress do? So it's not saying that Labour Congress can give 120 pages of document, but you see, they need to do something that is practicable. In terms of palliative, what has the Labour Congress done to even reach out to workers that are in their union members? What have they done? Now, Mr. Shulaka, and quickly, in just 30 seconds, if you will, in what's the alternative to the lockdown? If the lockdown is not extended, what should be an alternative to the There's no alternative the right now. If you don't do a lockdown right now, you're going to have a disaster you cannot manage. Political analyst Mr. Francis Chilaka, thank you for joining us on Plus Politics and for your wonderful contribution. And thank you for staying with us. We'll take our Plus report now and where will we turn? My take. Stay with us. In a
a bid to enforce the lockdown order of President Mohamed Buhari and the ban on interstate travels by transporters to and from the two states of Lagos and Ogun, including the federal capital Abuja. The FCT Police Command says it has commenced the enforcement of the ban on night travels. The Police Commissioner Balachi Roma had this no holds barred meeting in Abuja with transporters and chairmen of parks across the FCT read the riot act over what he termed unlawful conduct. It has been observed that some of your members observed the day lockdown in the day, but in the night time they don't observe it. Mr. Chiroma warned that there will be consequences if transporters engaged in night travels continue to disobey the federal government's directive, saying it goes against the efforts aimed at containing the coronavirus pandemic. Nobody should be seen to be sabotaging the lockdown. Now, I know say, we are here with friends, no? Yes, we are. Uh, we are partners in progress. Mm -hmm. But this one, there is no brother here. Mm -hmm. I call it and say, look, I want you now. If this rubbish is not stopped by a few numbers, perpetrated by a few, a few numbers, eh? and we'll cause the thing where we say we will seal up the park completely. We are part of the people that will help us break the chain of the transmission. For example, Bombay yesterday, some people traveled from Lagos to Bombay. They were immediately quarantined. Five of them tested positive. If to say they not travel from that neighbors, they allow the neighbors government to isolate them, when they would have been free. But they travel. The same thing coming. The same thing other places. Traveling, lying the course. We are not aware that there is somewhere at the great park where they are loading maybe in the night or in the midnight. If you go to our park now, all the gate is locked. All the, our tax force people, they are there working 24 hours. But the problem we have is that they, we don't have the pass. We don't move from our house to go and check what is happening in the park. And we say if we come here for this meeting, we will beg you, if there is any way they can give pass to all the chairmen, let them go around every minute of the day. Those places they are saying they a great new park, which we don't know, we have to trace them out and we will report to police for them to help us to arrest them. After receiving assurances from the transporters and the chairman of the several transport parks spread across the federal capital, the FCT police commissioner assured that they will be given every necessary support to contain the coronavirus pandemic. Me and you have a responsibility to ensure we have and say um, we'll give you policemen to operate, operate with members of your task force to ensure we put a stop to these unwanted night journeys. To ensure that the lockdown order in Abuja is successful. He says already 14 interstate vehicles have already been seized and will only be released after the lockdown directive. Amadin Uyi, Plus TV Africa. This is my take. I do agree and understand the public health implications and imperatives for wanting an extension of the lockdown in some parts of the country. And I think it is also very ponderous to accentuate the fact that the three states currently under total lockdown are the economic administrative action centers of Nigeria. The situation is very crucial, I know, and as much as it is important to keep many Nigerians from dying in the hands of coronavirus, we can downplay the current loss of income and the destitution that could also be a gate opener to numerous other sicknesses and deaths. I think it is time for the government to play the balancing game and seek and employ homegrown alternatives and solutions. The truth is that our economy might deteriorate into extended oblivion if the current lockdown in the nation's center goes beyond the current extension. Already, we're recording common acts of civil disobedience, temptation of law enforcement agents to gain passes, and even various forms of violent crimes. 
No one is sure how long the helm can be held on to in this stormy sea. We can only hope for the best and prepare for the worst should the lockdown exceed one month. I have to applaud the government for being proactive so far, but I'm also of the opinion that the palliatives and stimulus packages should be more comprehensive and be best served through consultation with social partners. And that's our show for tonight. We'll return same time tomorrow. Please practice personal hygiene and stay safe. We will overcome. Have a good night.